Now, let me discuss the beta blockers usage in patients with the congestive heart failure. Now, remember these beta blockers. Previously, it was considered to be contraindicated in patients with the congestive heart failure. Why were these contraindicated previously is because beta blockers they have negative inotropic effect negative inotropic effect now because these beta blockers they have negative inotropic action they found that this will further suppress the cardiac activity so that is the reason why they have considered that the beta blockers were contraindicated but Later on, what they found was these beta blockers, they were increasing the longevity. They were increasing longevity in patients with the congestive heart failure patients. Now, which type of beta blockers we have to use? If you take the beta blockers, now basically these are the drugs which will block the beta receptors. We have a three beta receptors like for example we have beta 1 receptors which are present in the heart we have beta 2 receptors which are present in the lungs we have beta 3 receptors which are present in the adipose tissue and as well as the uterus now these beta 1 receptors apart from present within the heart they are also present within the JG apparatus. Now, the beta 1 receptors which are present in the JG apparatus, whenever these beta receptors, when they are stimulated, whenever the beta 1 receptors in the JG apparatus, they are stimulated, they will cause the release of renin. They will cause the release of renin. Now, what does this renin do? Renin will stimulate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now, when beta 1 receptors are stimulated, what is the product we are getting? We are getting the product of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And what is the product of renin angiotensin aldosterone system? That includes the angiotensin 2. Now, what does this particular angiotensin 2 does? This angiotensin 2 will cause aldosterone release. Will cause this aldosterone release. Now, what does this aldosterone do? Aldosterone will cause the cardiac remodeling. Now, we want that aldosterone which is being produced because of the stimulation of the beta 1 receptors so what you try to do you try to block this particular beta 1 receptors if you are blocking this beta 1 receptors remember there is no stimulation of your ras pathway when there is no stimulation of the ras pathway it will not release aldosterone when there is no release of aldosterone there is no cardiac remodeling so what does this beta blockers do beta blockers will antagonize beta blockers will antagonize the remodeling or these are the drugs which will cause the reversal of remodeling now we have many beta blockers but the beta blockers which are useful in patients with congestive heart failure remember this is a very very important mcq the most widely used beta blocker is your carbidolol followed by the use of carbidolol the other beta blockers what we use is metoprolol and then we use bisoprolol so these are the most widely used beta blockers now remember this beta blockers in which class of congestive heart failure we use this these are the drugs which are best indicated 
in patients with nyha in class or classes of nyha class 2 and class 3 these are indicated now these are also the drugs which can be given in patients with heart failure due to a dilated cardiomyopathy right these are also the drugs which are given in patients with heart failure because of a dilated cardiomyopathy remember there is one absolute contraindication of this beta blockers in heart failure and this will be an MCQ beta blockers are contraindicated in decompensated heart failure so in patients with decompensated heart failure beta blockers are contraindicated why because beta blockers will reduce the cardiac contractility so that is the reason why beta blockers are contraindicated in patients with the decompensated heart failure but we can give these drugs in patients with nyha class 2 and class 3 congestive heart failure but it is contraindicated in nyha class 4 congestive heart failure it is contraindicated now there is one important precaution what you need to take whenever you are prescribing your beta blockers now what did we discuss the three important beta blockers that is carvedilol bisoprolol and as well as metoprolol these drugs should be started at very low doses remember these drugs have to be started at very low doses and the dose after once it is being started the dose it has to be gradually it should be increased once you increase the dose then you have to see whether the individual is having a maximum benefit or not so the important precaution is these drugs should be started at very low dose and should be increased gradually to get the maximum benefit so these are some of the important points about the beta blockers so let me shortly revise about the usage of beta blockers in patients with the congestive heart failure remember beta blockers were initially contraindicated but later they found that beta blockers were very much useful in patients with congestive heart failure because they will increase the longevity of the patients with the congestive heart failure why they were useful or why they were increasing the longevity is because we if we use beta 1 blockers they will suppress the ras mechanism because they suppress the ras mechanism the aldosterone is not being released so if aldosterone is not released then there will be no cardiac remodeling and most widely used beta blockers are bisoprolol metoprolol and as well as the carvedilol and these beta blockers they are indicated in nyha 2 and 3 congestive heart failure and these are contraindicated in patients with the a decompensated congestive heart failure that means in class 4 congestive heart failure beta blockers should not be given but whenever you are starting these beta blockers they have to be started at very low doses and should be gradually increased to get the maximum benefit